Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and in this video we are going to be wrapping up our game by adding the last pieces of the game logic. Following our previous video, uh, where we added collision detection, uh, most of the game is now intact. The player can move the avatar, the player can shoot the bullets, the bullets can collide with the comets, the comets can collide with the player, or with the, the screen edge. So at this point, all that we need to do is add the, the game logic to the game, and we can, we can call it a day. So what I want to do here is, first things first, I need to come up here to my include statements. What I want is a way to, to output to the player. All right, So I want to, to be able to tell the player what's going on in the game. And you can think of this as a very fundamental, a very primitive form of UI, which is user interface. Uh, user interface is that layer of, of, of inputs and outputs, the way the, the system communicates with the player, the way the player communicates with the system. So we're going to have a very primitive version of that. And we're going to use that just with text. So to remember to use text in Legro, I need to include a couple of files. So I'm going to do include Allegro 5, and then I'm going to do Allegro font.h, and I need to do include Allegro 5. Allegro ttf.h. Alright, for two try. True text font. Perfect. Alright. In this uh, example, I'm going to use the Arial font, which has, I've already moved into my project folder. So if you uh, are following along at home, alright, uh, and you're doing this, you might want to move your Arial font to whatever font you choose into your project folder now, so that when it comes time to compile, uh, your, your program won't crash. Um, if you do not have the font in the appropriate file, uh, your program will crash at runtime. Uh, so it's best to just just to take care of that now. All right. So what I want to do is I want to add a couple of variables. All right, because we need to keep track of how our game is progressing. Um, one of the things I'm going to add is this new variable called bool is game over. All right. I'm setting that equal to false. I want to know when the game has ended. Okay. Um, if the game is ended, then I can output to the screen, or I, I can stop uh, various functions. I'm also going to add an Allegro variable. I'm going to call it Allegro, or it's going to be a type Allegro font, and I'm just going to call it font18. Uh, in this case, 18 is going to be the size of the font. All right, so we have that there. And then we need to go about initializing a few things. So right down here, after AL install keyboard, I'm going to do AL init font add-on. I'm also going to do al init ttf add on. All right. And then we're going to come down here a little bit further, right before we're registering our events, and we're going to load our font. So I'm going to do font 18. It's going to equal al load font. I'm going to pass an arial ttf. And it's going to know to look in the project directory for it. Size is going to be 18. No flags. All right, great. All right, so now we have our font created, and we can begin using it. Now, basically what we want to do is we want to determine two things. One, when is the game over? And two, we want to modify the way our program runs based on the state it's in. So if you ever heard someone talking about game state, that's what we're talking about. Our game effectively has two states, two modes. And what that is, is either the game is not over, or the game is over. All right, And the game will actually keep playing once it's over, but what that word playing means, means two different things. So when the game is not over, the game playing means meteors are hurtling towards the player, the player shooting them, all that. When the game is over, what game playing means, is that it's just outputting text to the screen, telling the player how they did. All right, So we need to, to modify our updates, to determine uh, or, or, or to, to change how things work. So for instance, if the game is over, do I want to continue updating the bullets, starting comets, updating comets, colliding bullets and colliding comets, if the game is over? I don't. So I want to do, if not, is game over. So I only want to do this stuff if the game is still running. All right, tab that out there. All right. If the game's not running, if the game is in fact over, I don't want to do any of this stuff. I mean, this stuff is all fine. You know, it's it's all fairly neutral, if you will. 
Um, but we don't want to do any of this stuff, this higher processing stuff. And then the last thing is this, is if the game is not currently over, at the end of our update cycle, right, the end of our updating here, which is this whole function, we want to check to see, is the game over now? So I'm going to do if ship.lives is less than or equal to zero. We say less than or equal to uh, for two reasons. One uh, is if we say less than zero, we don't want the players to be able to play with zero lives. And if we say equal to zero and some weird glitch happens where we happen to collide twice, right? We don't want that lives to become negative one and then it never to be game over, you know, because it'll just keep going into the negatives there. So we say less than or equal to uh, to catch any of the possibilities. And then if that is true, I'm going to do is game over equal true. So the game will be over at that point. All right. So I said there's two things that we have to do if the game is over. One is we need to stop updating and, and actually handling any of these interactions. And the second thing we need to do is we need to stop showing it to the player. So if the game is over, we no longer want to see game objects on the screen. So right down here under redraw equals false, I'm going to do if not is game over. So if the game is not over, we're going to go ahead and continue on with these, these drawing functions. Um, and then we're going to say else, so if the game is over, I'm going to output to the screen. AL draw text F and my font is 15 and my color is going to be AL map RGB. My color is going to be 0, 255, Why not? And the position or the X position of that I'm going to do is width divided by 2, so the exact middle of the screen, height divided by 2. And then my flags is I'm going to do Allegro, Line, Center. So I'm picking the exact middle of the screen and then I'm centering it on there. And then my output's going to be this. Game over, final score, percentage I for our formatted string. And that is going to equal ship.score. Oh. Now, you might be noticing a few things like, hey, wait a minute, ship.score, we never do anything with that so on and so forth. We'll get to that, but let's go ahead and run that for right now. So we're going to see here, I'm going to let one hit me, I'm going to let one miss me, and I'll let one more hit me, bam, game over, final score zero. Okay, so we have now successfully determined when the game is over. We're no longer doing updates, and we're no longer doing renderings other than uh, writing this text to the screen. Great. Um, that's all well and good, but you might be thinking to yourself, well, what if I want to know how many lives or what my score is before I'm dead? And that's a good point. So let's come over here. Let's go ahead and add that. Let's do AL draw text F. And I'm going to use font 18. And AL map RGB. And I haven't used the color hideous magenta yet. So let's go ahead and do hideous magenta. Um, and then our positioning, I'm going to do 5 and 5. I want this in the upper left hand corner of the screen. No flags, so it'll be left aligned um, by default. Now do player has percentage I lives left. Player has destroy percentage I objects. All right, and then I will pass in ship dot lives and ship dot score. All right, great. So now we're going to go ahead and run this. And look at that. We can see player has three lives left, and boom, uh, one life left. Um, so obviously, I'm up against the wall now. Can't let any more go uh, until I do, and bam, game over, final score, zero. All right, great. So the very last piece we need now is the ship.score. The ship can only score when a bullet collides with a comet. And so to make this work, we actually have to modify the way our collide bullet works at this point. So I'm going to come back up here to where our collide bullet is. We're going to pass yet one more item in. And that last item is going to be spaceship ampersand ship. We are going to pass the player object in. 
we have to do that because it's the only way we can access um, that 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 uh, that variable. Now up here in Clyde Bullet, we need to modify our header here to be spaceship ampersand ship. And then if we have this collision, I'm going to type ship dot score plus plus. Okay, so the last thing we now need to do is we need to modify where we call Clyde Bullet right up here. And we are going to pass in ship. All right. We're looking for that extra variable. Now we go ahead and run it. And we will see that as we're destroying objects, our score is going up. So what we have now effectively is a complete game. We, uh, we have our, our objectives. We have our victory conditions. Well, our victory conditions is, is no. There's, there's no end to this game. We'll keep playing until, until you lose your lives. Uh, we have our loss conditions in place. Um, we don't have any escalating uh, difficulty, but you could add that in pretty easily. I mean, as time progressed, you could make uh, the comets come faster. Um, we could increase our array up to even 100 until eventually the screen is just full of these things. Um, so making the game harder is actually pretty simple. Um, oh, I missed one. I missed two. Oh, and there I missed my third. So game over. Final score of 42. So we effectively now have a complete game using everything we've learned so far with Allegro. And that is, for the most part, going to conclude part five of the series here. I'm going to do one more video where we're going to wrap things up, and that, that will be coming here soon.